Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hi, Brad Laughlin here on the Corner Bookstore on the USA Global TV and Radio Network. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, because this audience is truly a worldwide audience, whether live or on the archive portion on you on YouTube. We had a guest scheduled day, Jeff Craig. We've interviewed him before on the Wise Ones. Uh, he's a retired software developer here in Houston, Texas, where I live. Uh, his first book was An Emergent Truth, uh, which kind of combined a little bit of AI with murder mystery, with this and that. I really enjoyed it. I lent it to a friend of mine across the street. Uh, however, we're having difficulty reaching Jeff. Uh, hope it's nothing serious. So we're going to go to plan B today. And plan B is that we're going to talk with another author, very prolific author, uh, very recent author, and somebody that the show is familiar with, and that is Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. Please join us. Hello, Red. You were interviewing me today, so I'm going to switch places with you. How are you today? Exceptionally well, as always. That's in spite of having my uh, souvenir from the hospital last weekend. A little wow. hematoma there. He did a number on you. And it's interesting because as he's sticking me, I'm telling him, I said, you know, I've had, I've donated over 40 gallons of blood, blood products over the years, not to mention. Uh, I haven't missed a physical since 1968. I've been stuck a lot of times, uh, particularly in the military with all sorts of stuff. And I'm telling him as he's sticking, I says, you know, you're, you're rapidly approaching number one in my absolute worst stick ever. Um, and he did. I said, yeah, you're, I, I told the guy, I says, you're not a good sticker. You know, because when you. <laughs> sticker. <laughs> uh, yeah, you expect that needle just going. I mean, I take needles very, very easily. My wife, a lot of problem on that. I expect that needle just slide right in there. Now, yeah, I do have a lot of scar tissue, a lot on, on my veins that they, they draw blood from. But still the same. I've never really had a major issue there. Uh, that hematoma is horrendous. Uh, I mean, I got stuck in this arm. I didn't have any. I actually got stuck in my left arm twice. It bled all over my shirt. My all I mean, it's, I, it's a lot of issues there. But anyway, I got three or four sticks in my right arm and I'm, I'm an easy sticker. There's, there should be no problem with a phlebotomist putting a needle in me anywhere because I just have good veins. Anyway, I don't know if he was a, a learnee or what. I mean, I've had doctors ask me, I said, would you mind if this guy practices? I don't have a problem, uh, but that's just it. But anyway, regardless, the show is about you, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. So uh, a couple of years ago, I was on your show and I think it was, maybe wrapping with Dr. Jack or something like that. Uh, and I talked about how to write and publish a book for free. And the gist of that particular show kind of melded us together because you said, let's talk some more. And we talked and you had a book in idea uh, mind and we put that together and boom, we published it. Uh, and then another thing jumped out and boom, you published it. I mean, just like in two years, one year, you published two books, kind of remarkable. And then you you have a focus in your your business, in your in what you want out of life is to help people listen, being the chief listening officer and providing some really good value for people to be able to listen better than they are. So you came out with the children's book series and we, we did the first book, the second book. The third book, I mean, it's like every other month we're coming out with a book, boom, 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 boom. Uh, the gestational cycle on your books are extremely short. So, And now we're up to number five. And as we're talking about number five, just about being ready to be published here shortly, I think next month, 
uh, you had in mind to do a compilation book uh, of some authors so that other people can get in there. And there was some business reasons for that. And then all of a sudden, you know, I really should have something for the colitis and Crohn's disease. And so a kind of an idea germinated and you came up with a focus in that direction because of your involvement with the National Association of Those Diseases from an autoimmune perspective, very, very active in that. And now in the um, uni is it University of, uh, shake your head, yes, University of not Penn State. Penn State. Penn State. State. Yeah, Penn State. Uh, you have a, a teaching opportunity there and they asked you, do you have a book? And of course, you can generate a book in two weeks. I mean, it's what, what's the problem with, with, so anyway, so now you have another book that it's committed. Uh, that's literally almost done. If not, what you wait, said you're waiting for a cover. So all of a sudden you found a newfound art and mastered it writing a book. Tell us how that started. Thanks so much, Red. Well, as you mentioned, you gave me a lot of inspiration. And of course, there's so many incredible authors who are on this platform. And so I got to writing about how and why I left my corporate career. And that book is right here. It's called Behind the Green Screen. And so you and I worked together on this using your process, which was really neat. I'll have you talk about it. Uh, of course, there's a lot of green in here, so you can't really see it. And then lo and behold, and I, I just found this on my my a desk over there, June 4th, 2021, number one best-selling author on Amazon at 4.50 p.m. And that was so exciting. Uh, this book, even though it talks about how and why I left corporate, it's really a great place for people who are interested in starting a podcast, all the information that you need, all the tools that you need. And what I learned, I learned how to be a broadcast engineer throughout this process. So that was book number one. And that book number one truly is a good guide for how do you set up, how, what kind of equipment do you need, what kind of training do you need. Uh, and you, sometimes you just start out by just being a guest on a lot of shows and paying a lot of attention. Then all of a sudden now you're behind the green screen operating everything, hence the name of the show. And so that was pretty exciting because you get your book and boom, literally almost overnight, it became a number one best-selling book on Amazon. Uh, that is something that doesn't happen to many people, and congratulations for that. But you mentioned the mechanism. Now, you sit down and you start typing. It takes months, maybe longer, to write, to write a book. And I'm going to talk about something primarily nonfiction. Writing fiction books, romance, mystery, uh, sci-fi, it doesn't matter. Let's just talk about nonfiction books, because I think a lot of people can write a nonfiction book. It may be a hobby that you have. It may be part of your business. It may be a memoir. But it's something that that soon-to-be author is exceptionally familiar with. And Dr. Jacqueline, one of the questions I ask a lot of new authors uh, that are thinking about writing a book, I say, oh, Dr. Jacqueline, tell me about the first car you ever had. And when you start looking at answering questions as if in an interview, the interview questions the car becomes chapter one, chapter two, you decide what are the questions that become the book? What value do you want to add to other people? And when you start answering questions, something you know intimately about, all of a sudden writing becomes simple because I'm not typing anymore, I'm talking. I'm, I can talk into my Word, uh, Microsoft Word, and all of a sudden I have a book being generated in front of my face because everything I'm saying is being transcribed into writing. So I have a text. And if I'm telling you the story as part of my uh, answering the question, it requires very little editing, exceptionally few little editing. And that becomes a, a major focus in developing that chapter. So, okay, my first book, I want to say my first car, I want to say this, I want to say that. I want, so here are four or five things I want to say about my first car. Well, that's data. That's nice. Okay, it was this, it was this. But you need little stories, little vignettes that sell the book. So if I'm talking about one of my first cars, I'm driving over the high bridge in Corpus Christi, Texas, and all of a sudden, clunk, I mean, loud noise, like the car shatters, it shakes, and comes to a screeching stop, and I didn't do anything. Uh, and then as I'm noticing, my left rear tire is passing me and going down this, the bridge. 
uh, will I go down the bridge on three wheels and a brake drum, find the tire? Anyway, so you need the little stories because the stories are what sell. So figure out what is your book? What can you talk about? What are the topics that you want to talk about in each chapter? And address it as an interview. Add in the bullets so you know what you want to talk about and the order you want to talk about it. Add in the little stories. And it makes it so, so simple. Uh, would you not agree, Dr. Jacqueline? Yes, I absolutely do agree. It made it very easy. And one of the other key learnings that I had with this book was that I had trademarked Dr. Jacqueline. So doing 10 things here at one time. So this had a trademark next to it and then it became registered. So we had to go and change the book cover and then the interior because everything had to be changed to registered. So this is an old copy of the book, but you taught me so many different things uh, with your process and all so about how to get your book to be a number one bestseller. And it does require effort. The area that I still struggle with, and I know a lot of authors do is getting reviews and it's interesting because I know people who've read the book and they can't write a review because Amazon won't let them or people in other countries who've written reviews and the reviews aren't showing up. And I've also hired companies to actually read the books and then do the reviews and then they didn't do what they're supposed to do. So I'm still working on that. But um, the process that you have is fabulous. And I have recommended many people to you and will continue to do so because you really are a genius at what you do. Well, let's back up just a little bit before we get to the reviews. So you, you have the text of what you're writing. So what comes next? The editing. And two people can look at the same paragraph and come up with two different, you know, transitions of what it should be. Editing can be very expensive. There are a lot of different ways of editing a book. I prefer to have editing prior to COVID, have editing parties at the house where I have individual chapters with clipboards, red pens, and I say, I write on technical topics, uh, health and wellness. I, I dive into the science behind it. And I just hand it out and say, if you don't understand it, circle it. Uh, I'm not looking for spelling and punctuation. But if you see something that's wrong, tell me. And you'd be surprised every so often something comes up that is valuable. Because one of the guys that used to be here on our uh, USA Global TV and radio network, uh, Hyatt Ives, you know, he found that I happened to overuse the word if. And he circled 20 or 30 of them on whatever he people eat. And if or when. And so sometimes if really needs to be when because it adds more emphasis. So I went through that. I did a search and find. And I think out of 78 ifs I had in that particular book, I changed 75 of them to when. And so there are certain things that we have a tendency we don't think about. The word that. Most of the time, the word that doesn't need to be there. But. A topic that I introduced Dr. Jacqueline to, and she may laugh about it here just in a second, is chat GPT about editing. All of a sudden, it was one night and we're saying, well, are you aware of this? And then all of a sudden she went hog wild on chat GPT. I'm, I'm, I'm serious that she may not want to show her face right now, but uh, but it just all of a sudden <laughs> it just she, she found more uses for chat GPT than you know what to do with. So as I was editing my last book, uh, somebody suggested that I use ChatGPT to edit. Well, part of the protocol in ChatGPT is that I can say edit and put in a paragraph. And edit in ChatGPT really means summarize. It doesn't mean edit. But if I say edit for punctuation, edit for spelling, edit for syntax, edit for diction, edit for eighth grade reading level, I can tell it to do a lot of things, but I have to be very, very specific. But editing is very expensive, but you can get a free version of Chad GPT. And so long as you know the right keywords to use, I would not use edit. I would use the word proofread. Uh, you know, if you're writing a children's book and you want to make sure it's for that particular level, let's say fourth grade level, you know, write the book and then take each chapter, put it through Chad GPT and say edit for fourth grade reading level, because now it's honing in on exactly what you have. You own the intellectual property. Or you're doing is having a mentor tweak it for you. And so if you're using Chat GPT for free, there's there's a $20 charge if you want to use the more advanced version. But the Chat GPT can give you a lot of quick, simple things. If you're even creating a book and you want to know the history, more details about whatever it may happen to be, uh, there's a lot of information there. We just finished a program on 
food and our emotions on the USA Global TV and radio network just the last hour. And I probably did half of my research on Google and half of my research on chat GPT in order to figure out what do I want to talk about, the order I want to talk about it, and get some statistics that are meaningful for the audience. So as you're going through there, editing can be very expensive. When you're writing a fictional book, now you need a developmental editor, somebody that, you know, are you keeping track of the people, the locations, the time, all sorts of things in there. But if I'm just talking about my, my stamp collecting business or my speaking business or whatever it may happen to be, I don't need that level of editing. I need somebody that can do a line editing or copy editing, uh, or you have a, a, a party at your house, or you give it uh, to beta readers and let them come back with something that needs to be changed. But you want to make sure, number one, you're adding value, uh, and that's that's the key issue there, and then that, that value is presented in a readable way. So if we look at that part, now you have a text, it's edited, it's ready to go to, to print. But we're missing two things, Dr. Jacqueline. What do you think those are? We are missing testimonials. No, even before that. We really need a good cover. Oh, of course, the cover. Yes, I do the cover first, typically. Well, and part of the problem in publishing, I found with publishing a number of different authors, is a cover is the most delay of anything that's out there. If it's an ebook cover, <clears throat> nine times out of ten, not a problem. Every so often, you end up with an ebook cover that has issues with the number of pixels. It doesn't pass the filter for Kindle, and it has to be redone. And we always wait till the last minute. It, it's going to be released next week, and now we got to go back to the designer who's in Pakistan. It's a seventy-two hour con. I mean, just a lot of things there with regard to delays, but. The paperback, you have to actually have the book completed in order to know how many pages. So you have the front, the spine, and the back, and that's a different format, PDF versus the JPEG image for the, the other one. But if you're having a good cover, who's your competition? If you don't know who your competition is, it's super simple to find on Amazon. But take a look at the top 10, at least 10, maybe 20. What do their authors have? You know, is it a picture of them on the cover because they're a motivational speaker? Is it just text? Is it mainly blue? In other words, take advantage and steal shamelessly where you can. You can't copyright a title. So there may be a title that you really like. Yeah, that's a better title than what I have. You can you can take that one. So take a look and find out who's successful, why are they successful, and then have your designer give you a cover. Now, my last book, I was in a hurry to get done, uh, and so I used a free cover off of Kindle. I'm going to come back here very shortly, change that cover to something I like better, but it got me in the book on time without a problem. So when you have the cover, it's edited, it's ready to go. Now it's ready to publish. We need an author account. You don't know what to do. Go to your Dr. YouTube. Everything that you ever need to know about publishing a book, creating your author account is on YouTube. Why not take advantage of it? You have up one screen that says do this you go over here and you do it I, I can't tell you how many times i've done that with so many different things in life there's just i have a challenge with installing something or making something work or what here's youtube okay i do that i come back to the youtube play for another 10 seconds go back to doing what i'm doing so you need an author account relatively easy to set up it's four different pages and each one of those pages won't let you go to the next one until it's complete uh, and so that's critical to get your author account because that's how it gets published. And we're talking about, for this purpose today, an ebook and a paperback. Yeah, you can do the hardcover books, you can do audio books, you can do a, a, other things, but we're talking about getting you published as an author. You have a book that you can hold in your hand, just like Dr. Jacqueline was doing a second ago, and you have an electronic version of the book that you can send out or have people buy. Uh, but if you have a PDF version of your book and you want to send it out to somebody as a gift, you know, that that's a pretty good thing to have, too. So you have your cover now that's kind of aligned with the color, the context of what is your, your cover really look like, the fonts, the, those kinds of things. The book is ready to be published. And now we get back to the reviews. So, Dr. Jacqueline, tell us about your history of reviews. Well, my history of reviews is very short. I'm actually going to pull up the Amazon 
page where you can find my books. And I do want to say that some of the books I've written by myself and some of them I've had co-writers like Mariska Dupria and Madeline Chan. So let's just go through and we can see the reviews as we're looking. So it's uh, it's kind of bleak, folks. So anybody out there who would write some reviews, I'd really appreciate it. So this was the first book behind the green screen, how to succeed in the live broadcasting business. And you can see that one has 14 reviews. That's sad, but even sadder. The second book, which was also an Amazon number one bestselling book, Adversity to Awesome, True Life Stories of Inspiration from Survivors of Imprisonment, Addiction, Sexual Assault, and more. Five reviews. Ooh, crying over here. And if we come up here to The Amazing Adventures of Lady Ella, The Listening Mentor, this is the first book in the children's series. And this has 12 reviews. Something I just want to mention about these books, because I think it's it's unique from what I've seen out there, that these books, the book covers, they feature animals who represent real people like Red, who have taken my course, The Power of Listening, and they've become an elevated listener. So by becoming an elevated listener, not only are you enriching your own listening skills, you're probably bringing a lot of value to your family and to your work because you're learning how to listen without judgment, without providing a solution, without stage hogging, without interruption. But you are helping children and their families learn how to listen. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. But so this is the first book. And then the second book is the ABCs of listening. And what's kind of cool about this, Red, is that we actually have a song that was written to fit into this book. So there's actually sheet music in the book. And then there's a song called Listening Lazies. So I'd like to give credit to the people who helped me on this particular project. And I'd like us to just take a look and a listen because we get paid for it. Why not? Let's take a look. When we speak, we don't hear. It's abundantly clear. Listening lace is creeping. And nobody's gonna win. Look someone in the eye. If you don't, they surely will cry. You don't hear a word I say. Cause you always look straight away. Listening laces, try to look crazy. Listening laces, making us blue. Listening laces, communication goes hazy. Listening laces, listening laces. Da 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 Listening laces, try to go crazy Listening laces, making us blue Listening laces, communication goes hazy Listening laces, listening laces When you interrupt your friend You will surely have to make amends Lady Ella knows the way To help you listen better every day And what's that? It's listening Listening laces, try to go crazy Listening laces, making us blue Listening laces, communication goes hazy Listening laces, listening laces Listening laces, try to go crazy Listening laces, making us blue Listening laces, communication goes hazy Listening laces, listening laces, listening laces Wow. How about that, Red? Hard to believe that was done in 2023 and, and it seems so long ago. <laughs> and here's the third book, Lady Ella Has Afternoon Tea in London. And then the fourth book just came out. Where is the fourth book? Come on. Look under four. There it is. The Ocean Calls and Lady Ella Listens. The next book that's coming out, number five, is Lady Ella Listens in the Baobab National Game Park. 
And then we have book six, Lady Ella is going into outer space. And I don't remember where she's going on the seventh book. And then this book, The Magical Adventures of Lady Ella and Her Superpowered Friends, this is from the second book series of Lady Ella, The Listening Mentor. And then, of course, we have this book, which is coming out. Uh, looks like the date's going to have to be changed, September 15th. Blonde, Sexy, and Hot as You Know What, Beauty, Brains, and Ulcerative Colitis. So this is my true life accounting of living with ulcerative colitis, which is not always so hot and pretty. And also we have this collaborative book project with Dr. Madeline Chan and then a number of creatives who have given us their story to share with the world. And then finally, I don't think there's, it's not actually not on here. So the next book that is coming out is the one that I'm super excited about. It's, it's the title is Mastering the Power of Elevated Listening, Solutions for Deeper Connections, Better Relationships, and More Authentic Conversations. And in this book, there are actually two quizzes, one that you take before you read the book to test your listening skills. And if you do not get 100 percent you are not an elevated listener and then of course you read the book there are case studies there are testimonials and then at the very end there is yet another quiz that when you pass this quiz you have the opportunity the opportunity to join our team once you take the course the power of listening okay some of your books were single digit reviews but you yes. ended up number one yes uh, or number one new release Yes. Uh, and so somebody says, if I only need a dozen reviews, that shouldn't be too bad. However, it's not just the reviews. They are super critical, but it's also the categories that you choose. If you're choosing an, a children's book in an animal category with whales or camels or butterflies, each one of those categories may have a competitor that you don't know about putting a book out the same day. So let's assume we have a book with ladybugs and Oprah Winfrey decides that she's going to write a book on ladybugs, children's book in the same area that you're writing on the same day. And it's released all of a sudden, you know, she has a million people buying her book. You have 35, you're not going to compete. But if 35 people buy your book and nobody else out there has that category that's selling today and tomorrow usually within a 72 hour window uh, then you have a chance because your sales are there the reviews are coming in and so there are other factors and what worked three years ago with amazon is not the same formula that's working today and so it's i'm not going to say hit and miss there are certain things you can do to help yourself out and those are are critical that the hard part is not writing the book the hard part is not publishing the book the hard part is getting the sales. And when you're a, a new author and you say, I'm going to make all sorts of money with this book because people really need to know this. And then you find out six months later, you've only sold 17 copies and given away 30. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of disillusionment. So there's a lot of issues out there. Writing the book is great because now you're a published author. Uh, being able to use the book in your business because it become a business card. In fact, a good friend of mine here in Houston, he has a book that's literally the size of a uh, CD case. It, it's 62 pages and it's on SEO and he uses it as a business card. And his ability to give that to the CEO of companies or give a half a dozen copies to the senior staff. Uh, I'm serious. He, he makes six plus figures a year and has for a number of years. Uh, I've been trying to talk about updating the book because it's a pre-COVID book, uh, but he's had very great success using that small book as a business card. And so there's a lot of things you can do with regard to actually his, I think his book sales on Amazon, probably about 1500, something 2000, but his a business because he's using it in another capacity. So sometimes it's just not the sales of the book. It's the business you bring in because you have that. Uh, and so if you're a speaker and you don't have a book, think seriously about it uh, if you can't provide a consistent message to your audience as to who you are what you do maybe you need a book and it doesn't have to be a hundred page book it could be a 25 page ebook something you can send to somebody or give to somebody and you say here this is who i am this is what i do this is the value i add this is why i'm different than other people so those are the things that are are out there that are available when you're an author but you got to get there first so 
Uh, what did we not cover that we should have covered, Dr. Jacqueline? Well, let's see. Oh, I know something that I think is also important, and I'm just going to bring up another website. So in addition to writing the book, depending on what your topic is, you can also leverage some additional focus as well as revenue by branching out with logo merchandise as well as uh, opportunities for other people to get involved. So here you're going to see this is a website that is accessible by either of my two main websites, usaglobaltv.com and drjacqueline.com. I actually have five websites and they all are linked together so that people don't have to search for a one-off website. But what I really love about this, if I say so myself, is the fact that in addition to the books and people being part of the book experience by becoming an animal character, we're now going to have coloring books for each of the books. So that could be a different audience. That could be an audience of children. It could be or, uh, coloring books for adults. And then people also have the ability to go to our store on Zazzle, which is a different website, but you can pull up merchandise that have the characters on it. So we have hats and keychains and t-shirts. So that's the point that I want to make, depending on what you're writing, you can also expand it really to have, I don't want to say to start an empire, but literally who knows where it can go. And I have to say that there's been a lot of trials and tribulations, so to speak, about doing this. Uh, something else that I want to share as I stop sharing my screen here, because I think this is kind of interesting, is that you can also engage the audience. I would say having a website is really key and having a good website that provides a clear understanding of what it is that you do. So for me, um, I read, I told you this, I'm not getting off track because I think it really has to do with being an author and being a business person, but you can go ahead and source people to do your websites. I was getting rates from 10 to $15,000 to do what I wanted to do. And I did the whole thing myself. It took, I don't know, 40 hours or something. But anyway, my point being that when you come here to this website, it integrates not just what I do for coaching and courses, but also the books. And in addition to that, you can get to the Zazzle shop that I told you about over here. I've got all these testimonials from people who took courses and who also uh, on this other page, who also have read the books. So little by little, it's building and building and building. So you can meet Lady Ella, this takes you to the other website. You can order the books. You go to the Zazzle store. You can download that song that I just shared with you. And then you can also take the quiz, which I don't remember where I put that. There's the power of, here is the power of listening quiz. So that goes along with my branding. So the books about listening, you say to yourself, oh, I'm a great listener. Well, if I've met you or interviewed you, I might disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> because I study people and their listening skills. So you can actually go here and check your listening skills. So the point I'm making is as a, a, an author, you're also an entrepreneur. You're a business person. You can build an entire brand and legacy around what it is you're doing. It just takes time, resources, and obviously money. Yeah. Branding is very, very important. Uh, one of my first mentors, uh, a guy by the name of Myron Golden, uh, he had a saying that, you can make $50,000 easier in a month than you can in a year. He says, you make $50,000 easier in a week than you can make it in a month. He says, you can make $50,000 easier in a day than you can in a week. And he says, you won't believe me, but actually it's easier to make $50,000 in an hour easier than a day. And it all revolves around what kind of email list you have. You know, if you have an email list because you've been building it up over years from your website or from some other kind of landing page, and you have value for people that you're sharing on a regular basis. Uh, you know, maybe you have 200 people now and a few years you have 2000, you know, down the road, you're offering seminars and webinars and whatever. And those things now you have 20,000 people. So if you have a new product that's coming out and it's a, gives you 10,000, you know, $10 profit, and you can get that out to a wide audience that people will buy it because they, they want what you have. Literally, you tell them you're going to release it on this date, and boom, it's there. And you have 10,000 people buying your, your, your product, your service, whatever it may happen to be. And so it's critical that you tie all that together, but it's part of that mindset 
that, okay, I'm writing a book. Why? Who's my audience? How do I get to them? And then how can I further? Do I need a second book? Do I need a third book? Uh, I talked to a, a guy the other day, and he has a 69-page kids book, and we talked about three different books that really needs to be. Okay, fine. He's working on three different children's books because it doesn't make sense to have that big a book. Uh, sometimes you end up with a 350 page book that should really be two or three books. So look at who your competitors are, what value they're offering, what are you offering that's not there? And then you can start saying, well, how can I expand this? How can I get this out to more people? Uh, and that's, you know, this is part of what we're doing here on the USA Global and TV and Radio Network is getting that that message, that awareness uh, out to the world. And on the corner bookstore, it's all about the author. It's all about the book. So I'm going to let you wrap it up, to Dr. Jacqueline. How do people get your books and, and who should get your books? Thank you so much, Red. And while I'm doing that, if you can check the chat, that would be fantastic. So thank you. Okay. So thank you, everyone who is watching and listening and would like to purchase my book, our books. We would absolutely love it. You will see my contact information is here on the screen. And as I just mentioned, you can go to any of my websites, usaglobaltv.com or drjacqueline.com, and the books are there. And if you are a team member and you have a book, we would love to spotlight your book on our websites. If you're not a team member, what are you waiting for? This is a great time to become an elevated listener and join our team. We just signed up two people in the last 24 hours. So we're super excited about that. Okay, let me go back to Red and find out, let's see. Red, do you have time to stay or shall we say goodbye? Oh, I can't hear you. Hold on. Sorry. I have two more shows coming up and only an hour to reboot the computer that I have right now because it has a tendency to get overflowed from the first two shows we've done today. Uh, so unfortunately, I would love to stay. I certainly would and, uh, and pick up where we should have been to start with. But I will talk to Jeff and we will reschedule and get him on where we can spend some time and now that we have the additional information we are missing, we can uh, make sure that that happens. So everything else being equal, I think right now uh, we planned on about a 30, 35 minute show. We're a little bit over that, not a big deal. Uh, so I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up today's show. And uh, very shortly, uh, the wise ones comes on in a little, a little over an hour and 15, 20 minutes. And then after that talking head, so Dr. Jacqueline, I'll work with our, our guest and make sure we get rescheduled. Uh, that should have been here, Jeff, uh, Craig, today. And okay. uh, get from there. Thank you so much. All right, Red, we'll see you later on today. And Jeff, see you backstage. We look forward to having you next time. Okay, this show is brought to you in part by our sponsor, Diane Floyd Bame. Let's take a look and listen to her testimonial and then her sponsorship. Please do reach out to Diane. Her books are here behind me. I never can figure out which way to go. Over <laughs> they are over here. This one, whoo, this one is is uh, my my book along with Mariska and Red and our incredible, brilliant illustrator, MD. And then these are some of Diane's books. I can't keep up with her. We would need an entire, just a wall dedicated to Diane's books. All right, let's take a listen and then we'll be back for the wise ones. Bye. Hello, I'm children's author, Diane Floyd Bain and I am co-host for several of the USA Global TV and radio shows. I joined because of the purpose of the USA Global TV and radio. They provide content for the viewers and listeners, an opportunity for people around the world to have their own show or even be a guest on an existing show. We truly believe in helping others get their positive message out to the world. We also have the opportunity for the listeners, you can watch on several platforms and on YouTube, you can ask questions and even give a comment. We absolutely love it. I love being part of the USA Global TV and radio because I love positive messages and who doesn't? And we need more of that in the world. We are a family and we hope you will join us and become part of the family too.